And here we go. So, nice and bright. And we'll just do just around the room in general. So, little door, more of this really cool artwork that we got at the Shy, actually the Pueblo Zoo quite a number of years ago, finally getting around to putting it up. Just a little red versus blue poster. Here is a little thing that I got super excited about. I couldn't believe it's finally happening. A number of years ago, I went through, you know, some financial hard time difficulties. Dog was had a lot of vet bills and all this other crazy stuff going on with family and cars breaking down. And I had a part with a few snakes, including my pair of Doomerol's boas, James and Lily. And recently, someone, the person I was selling to, is also going through some stuff, had losses you know, uh, going through everything with COVID and everything like that and was downsizing on all of his stuff. And uh, I went, hey, I recognize that snake. Is that James? And it was, and I messaged him and he gave him back to me at a really good price, the same one that I gave him because he was kind of in a hurry. So I got my buddies, James and Lily back. They are in quarantine here. Uh, they are in smaller tubs than I would like at the moment. They have larger tubs, but they are going back into quarantine and they will be retested for IBD or arena virus as with all of my boids. So starting with that, uh, this is just another little quarantine rack. There's one in there. He's all the way down at the bottom. She actually, uh, that's my Brettles Python, uh, the girl that we did on our species spotlight. And then this is just a spare little exoterra. Uh, I'm eventually planning on using it for kind of like a gift or like a for something for a couple people that you know were really really supportive of me when we very first started this channel and I mean we're not taking off crazy at this moment at the time of this video by YouTube standards by any means but you know over a hundred viewers subscribers and people who watch this every time and in the small reptile community here in Colorado people are starting to recognize me by my videos and stuff so just wanted to give a big thanks to those guys they really like frogs star frogs and so I think I might do a video at some point and set this all up and give them to that and do a little dart frog for them as a big thank you. Um, just a cute little plant. Plants in here kind of help. They add to the humidity. They help kind of clean the air. Awesome, cool little things. Uh, my adorable Beanie Baby collection and stuffed animals because I am a child. Uh, just a little pest strip for the fruit flies because when you have geckos, you get fruit flies. And when you get fruit flies, you usually get black widows which can be a good thing, but overall we do try to avoid them. Although in here we have a lot of false black widows for some reason. I don't know what's up with that, but we do have a number of actual black widow females in here. So over here, this is our veiled chameleons, our male. Here he is. Doesn't have a name, but it's kind of late. I'm filling this right now, but we've spent all day getting this room ready to roll. And then there's our female, the translucent. There she is up there. She hates my guts. Sorry, going through the screen and everything like that. I don't, I know everybody likes reptile room tours. I'm not really sure what to do, but so as we talked about in the species spotlight, and I also believe in the chameleons in Colorado thing, here's our little dripper uh, set up right there, the little reptorain right there. And then that sprays through and trickles down like this, down through the foliage that they can sit there and munch on and drink off of the leaves. And then it collects in this, so that way it doesn't build up a bunch of liquid down below have it in both of them just like that. So hooray, it took a minute to finally figure that out, but got that ready to roll. Down below we have our lychees. We just cleaned them out, they're doing really good. We were hoping we had a male and a female. Turns out we have two females. There's our girl, she is not super happy with me. Not the biggest fan in general, so not super handleable. And they have huge jaws. As you can tell, this is a pretty big gecko. Uh, let's see. Yeah, the other one is hiding in a little hole. So as you can see, like here's, let's see if I can do this. Sorry, guys. Like there's my hand in comparison to her. I'm right next to her. So she's a monster. Although they do get a lot bigger depending on the true locality. She is an unknown variety. Um, somebody who was going through some hard times uh, ended up giving them to us as well as some other animals. The other setup right next to it. So those are our lychees. And then we'll continue to cruise around. Nice little hole in the wall when we're moving stuff. Needs to get patched at some point. And then our window with our bromeliads. And then our other plant whose name I can't remember. I will try to remember to throw this up. Um, and then our pond here, who we only in here still have 
our one big female albino Oscar who is also blind and has to be kind of tongue fed or with very slow singing pellets right above her. But that's okay. I still love Oscars to death. Um, I started out doing aquariums to begin with when I was still like in high school living at my parents at my mom's house. So that's just what we have here. And it also helps add to humidity in here. But whenever you try to do this indoor pond kind of a deal, you got to make sure to keep an eye on your humidity. If you get too much, it will start to have mold growth, which isn't a good thing. Um, it does create a little bit of splash. That's why we have this plastic here in the back. Um, up here, just some plants. Again, those little right there. The swamp cooler for the summer to kind of help regulate temps. Because as you know, a lot of these uh, crested geckos and lychees and Asian rat snakes, they need kind of more room temp, kind of cooler temperatures. And this house overall is great for a lot of tropical snakes like, you know, ball pythons and boas and retics and stuff like that. But it's not great for these things. It'll actually get too hot if I don't have some sort of air conditioning or swamp cooler unit in this room to where it'll be get too hot to detrimental for their health. So just this little swamp cooler unit had to set this up because it started to uh, build up condensation below. A couple more bromeliads. And then right along to the big wall. We'll back up and we'll just kind of cruise the cages pretty quickly. Still trying to keep things fairly, uh, fairly short. Sorry about the lighting in here, guys. Even during daylight, I would get a horrible glare, which is why I'm actually shooting this at night. Not to mention just bloody took forever. And then the huge wall, and then we'll come over here. Like I said, and we'll just cruise over and we'll just start and we'll just go from right to left. So here is our, you know, basically this is the gecko room. On the other side, there are the chameleons and the lychees, but for all of the actual little geckos and small little guys like that, that is this wall right here. So cruising right along. Up here we have two female uh, crested geckos. And down here we have two crested gecko females. We have a nice little buckskin girl. And then we have a pretty decent little harlequin frog butt girl who is very pretty, but she has actually killed a number of males that we've had because she's just so aggressive. But this female seems to be doing just fine in here with that. I'm not going to sit here and try to pull them all out. It's just a little quick tour. If you want to go more in depth, let me know down in the comments at the end of this video if you want to see something like that. Up here are our two giant Crimson Day Geckos. They are super flighty. They're not very handleable day geckos at all. And specifically these ones, they're very quick to not only drop their tails, but they'll actually slough off chunks of their skin, which takes a number of weeks for it to kind of regrow. So I don't like to mess with them too much, but I redid their habitat, gave them this nice little log and a couple more hiding spots in the back that you, you probably can't see. Um, but they're super flighty, I don't like bothering them. Uh, these guys have the UV bulb in here, so obviously you can tell that we have this light, the light the window is open, and there's kind of a bunch of really bright lights all over the place. So they don't all have UVB on them, but they do have a 12-hour daylight cycle, and the ones that do need UVB I do have on there. So up here we have more crusted geckos, and he is hiding, and we cruise down below. This little one was supposed to live in a business in like this cool little lantern setup but unfortunately they weren't able to have that with their code or whatever else it is, so he came here to live with us. He has this kind of weird wonky tail, which probably doesn't inhibit any sort of breeding thing because Presties just drop their tails all the time for no reason because that's what they like to do. Another crusty cage, we'll back up a little bit. Yeah, I'm all the way, there we go. Another crusty cage right there. These are two little empty mini kind of like bug ones where eventually I'd want to put like a couple different maybe species of millipedes or maybe a t uh, like a cave scorpion, like a uh, maybe like a vinegaroon or maybe like the tailless, the tailless cave scorpion. Probably the tailless cave scorpion vinegaroons need a little bit more room, I believe. So maybe a maybe the whip scorp the tailless whip scorpion there or and then maybe millipedes there, maybe like the bumblebees, maybe the giant Africans. We'll see, we'll just have to see how things go along. They're just kind of sitting empty, ready for anything like that. And here we have our little, well, this one will actually pop open. This is our little gargoyle gecko. He's just a pet. He has a little bit of a spinal deformity. Can I get in there? No, you can't really see that, sorry guys. But he's a cute little orange splotch uh, gargoyle gecko from Gargoyle Queens. But 
He's just a pet only because of his little thing. Down here we have another UB strip because we have a Peacock Day Gecko. I'm not sure of the sex. Um, a buddy of mine who does a lot of geckos here in town is maybe interested in doing a bit of a swap. So if I can figure out what sex he is, I might get a second one to make a pair and maybe breed them and do some swaps out for maybe some Stimson Eye or uh, maybe a trade plus some cash for some Williams Eye, those electric blue day geckos, which would be super, super cool. And then here is Becca's Halloween themed Crested Gecko one. Um, this is a cute little boy. He's really nice. I believe this is one of the ones that was given to us. Uh, I don't know, maybe, possibly. Let's see if we he'll put up with us getting him out here. But she loves Halloween and fall and all that jazz. Hunts the pumpkin in the fall foliage. Will you come out? Will you come out? Come on. He's a really nice, oh, come on, buddy. All right, fine. Well, one more time. Here we go. There he is. Just a nice, big, really beautiful boy. You gonna go back in, buddy? There you go. All right. Moving right along, there you go. Down here are the other quarantine snakes that we have, the Cape Gopher and the Ghost Brooks that we have shown off in our Colubrids video. Over here, we have more more crusties. We have a lot of crusted geckos. They're really Becca's thing. Over here, our Polydarium, which doesn't have any fish in here right now. I, uh, at one point I had some Cardinal Tetras and it just wasn't, didn't really work out very well for that. So I might put a Beta or something like that and they're definitely not a goldfish. Goldfish get way too big. You can see it back there. Over here, another couple crested geckos. This cool little one right there. This one who's pinky, who is a bit of a spaz back there, so I'm not gonna open it up, but you see back there, he's really pink, he's really nice. Moving right along, we have our flying gecko. There she is, our flying gecko. Super blends in really well. They're really cool, obviously called flying geckos for people think that they fly, but they just have these really, have really loose skin, these big fan tails and these big kind of webbed feet, even more so than a lot of the regular geckos like the New Caledonians and stuff. And basically what they do is they'll just jump off and then use that extra skin and spread it out to just kind of glide down as well. That tail also helps with uh, aiding in camouflage. So shut that back up. This is our big gargoyle girl, just a brown reticulated one or striped one. There she is. She's nice, but she's brown, so not really many people like the browns. But uh, uh, she's back there. Sorry. Just think of this kind of like a, a Photoshop of the, a, a trip of the zoo. Oh, Pinky just dropped. We'll see. There he is. There's Pinky. Pinky. There you are. How you doing, buddy? I'm not opening the door. I've been fooled before. All right. Someone broke the latch on that, so paper clip. And then a couple more. And up here is our biggest crested gecko. This is Hermes. He is a monster. He will, all the, uh, I don't know how many of you guys have gotten too, too into breeding crested geckos, but male crested geckos, when they want to go, they will get very aggressive when it comes to breeding. Uh, they will bite and latch on. They will just kind of leave stuff on things, including people's arms and hands. And he has a lot of size. I don't actually know what he weighs, but he is larger than any other crested gecko we have. He's seven years old, going strong. He's a frog butt, but he is absolutely a spaz. There he goes. Moving right along. Up here is our Chinese cave gecko enclosure. He hides all day long. We did the species spotlight on them. He just hangs out in there, eats a couple crickets. It's really cool to have this awesome gecko that I will never see, but it's okay. I still like him a lot. Moving right along, here's our Asian rat snake. She's technically still in quarantine, but she is going to stay living in this room anyway, because as I said before, this place is very, this room is set up for Asian rat snakes who like the high humidity and don't need really high temps. Uh, this one, oh, oh, didn't lock that. Urgh. Come on. Uh, that's why I didn't lock it. Jeez. Oh, it is kind of clipped there a little bit. Up here is our little red-eyed tree frog. We had a pair. They don't really live that long. Um, the other one, they were at least three years old when I got them. And so that we've had them for about a year and a half. So he's an old frog as far as red-eyed tree frogs go. This is what they look like most of the time. Open this up. You can kind of see, hopefully I can see that. They have this little membrane on their eye to where it's never fully closed. So even when they're sleeping, 
yep, there we go, we kind of woke up a little bit, it will pick up the change in light so they can see if a predator is coming to get them or not. You usually spend all of their time in the wild under leaves while sleeping and stuff, and they're strictly nocturnal, so they don't necessarily need the UVB light. So that's why he doesn't have any, but there's still a light cycle in here. Um, he's just kind of grumpy at me right now because, well, it's it's dark out. It's like 11 o'clock right now. Um, down here is our little Timor monitor cage. Eventually, he's going to get upgraded to a larger one, but most of the time he spends either under this huge quirk bark that I have here. You can kind of see his tail. He's not the most handleable person. He's not really bitey, but he's just super flighty, and those nails will tear you up. And then he comes up here... And he hangs out right here under his UVB and basking bulb. He is a monitor, so he still does need that fairly high temperature little basking spot. So that's why this little mini halogen up here does a good job of taking care of his heat and everything like that. They are fairly strictly her uh, insectivores, but I will throw them a pinky every once in a while, especially when one of the baby snakes or the rhino rat or something doesn't want to eat, so he will get a pinky. Uh, Rand are absolute favorite judgmental adorable little bugger frogs oh there he is it's the no not right there right, we'll look at this one then it's the milk frogs i love these guys these are absolutely the best hopefully you guys liked our species spotlight about them i'm gonna just gonna keep bringing up all these other videos and i'll throw cards and stuff in here as we go along but wrapping this up a little bit down below is our japanese rat snake let's see is he in yep he had a pretty big crawler yesterday, so he's the, under there under his little hide. So as you can see, Japanese rat snakes don't get very big, but they're fairly arboreal. And even though he does like to climb, he doesn't like to stay perched. So I gave him this. I gave him a vine that he promptly pulled down. That's right there. So I'll probably be throwing up some more sticks and stuff for him sooner than later uh, for him to climb on and see if he exercises with that. And then down below, we have our little tomato frogs. Everybody's favorite chubby little heirlooms from Madagascar, the tomato frog. There's one, the other one's buried down below. Nope, little fly. Do, 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 the little tomato frogs. So as I pointed out before, most of the time they bury, so that's why they have this really deep litter right here. This is the bio setup. Um, there's no living plants in here, but there are plenty of springtails in here. And there's still a couple crickets roaming around, and there is a pet spider in there for him. They're just crawled back by the little water dish in the back. <gasps> Did you croak? Oh, no, I thought I heard a croak. They, they don't really have a very loud croak. It's just kind of like a uh, sound, and it's really cute to hear. And that's a, this is about the time of night when we'll, they will start to do it. The other one's kind of buried. But evidently, someone commented down below of the tomato frog video, whereas what theirs actually like to climb. So they sat there and gave them a bunch of sturdy branches and stuff. And when they were little, I had them in one of the small little exoterras for like the single crested geckos over there. And they never once did it. So I went, eh, I'll just bury like they're supposed to. But I guess everybody has some weirdos when it comes to animals. It's not just me. Well, there you go, guys. That is the reptile room tour. This is my little station setup. Little trash can down here. This is the gecko food bowl read things because we do wash them whenever we can. And then our in this room, doesn't leave this room stuff, chlorhexidine. This is vinegar water for cleaning that off. Food for them. Uh, I did have a paper towel roll, but it's currently outside because we were cleaning the cages out in the living room. But hopefully you enjoyed this little uh, fun little reptile room tour. Just a quick little spin and turn off the light so these guys can get some rest and the crusties can come out although they're kind of grumpy at us because we just cleaned all of their cages but hopefully you enjoyed this you guys like this little video reptile room tour if you want to see more detail about any of these any of these critters up in person i have quite a few already on species spotlights and things like that but if you want to see anything specific let me know in the comments and i hope you enjoyed this video and i hope you have a good day